The Secure Software Development Lifecycle, SSDLC. This is the SDLC, but a custom SDLC that I've created called the SSDLC. I mean, it's existed before, but what I'm about to show you is my version of the Secure Software Development Lifecycle that I've put in place and developed at loads of organizations across different industries. So it's known as the Secure Software Development Lifecycle. Now, it follows the same steps as the Software Development Lifecycle, but you can't, this doesn't look the same at every organization. What I first do is I map out what the SDLC looks like at different companies and different teams, for example, and then I'll put in top and integrate security practices as part of that and then turn that into a secure software development lifecycle. So it's kind of like a lens that you put over the top of the SDLC. Okay. So as you can see from the diagram, we have an initiation phase, design, development, a testing phase, and then a deployment phase, and then a maintenance phase. Okay. Now in the initial phase, we do a critical asset assessment or a critical asset list like we've done during this course. Then we create user stories as potentially as anti-attacker stories, for example. Then we write security requirements, functional or non-functional, more particularly security requirements with security embedded throughout that. Then in the design phase, we'll do the inherent risk assessment as you've all done. We then do a security architecture design review, which includes reviews and reviewing the high level diagrams and the data flow diagrams from a security perspective or building our own and working with the team to do that. Then we'll run a threat modeling workshop. Once we've designed the app and we know what it's looking like, we get the team together, we run the threat modeling workshop. Then as the team develops their code, we do the review of their Terraform code. More in particular, we'll put in place an infrastructure as code scanner, which I'm gonna talk through in a bit. Then we do SAST and SCA scanning, which we're gonna cover in a minute. And then we do a review of the whole pipeline. All the security steps as part of the pipeline and any gates that we have. Now in between each phase and before the team potentially moves into the next phase, if they're building a product for the first time, obviously we don't wanna stop the team. So we wanna automate as much of these processes as we can when iteratively building new code. But when we're first building the app for the very first time, and it's a big new platform, for example, you might wanna put in place SWGs, which stands for security working groups, which would just be sign off meetings so that you're happy for them to go into the next phase. Then we're gonna go into the testing phase. And then this is where we provide pretty much our final security sign off, where we'll get everyone in a meeting and we'll go through any current risks. And we say, right, we have to sign this project off. Put in place the custom WAF rules from the threat modeling. Then we run our DAS scans, dynamic application security testing, which I'm gonna teach you about in a bit. Um, we do these at the end because you need a working application to do these off. Then we schedule the penetration tests. We will do an internal penetration test within our team if we can and if we've got those capabilities as well as an external penetration test. And what we would do is we would use the findings from the threat modeling and all the work we've done to try and validate some scenarios. So you might provide some scenarios to the penetration testers to be like, actually, can you validate if these things are true, if these findings are actually here? Typically, you'd want to do um, what was essentially a white box pen test in the sense that you'd provide diagrams, you'd give them credentials, etc. because the reason we do that is because, well, a determined hacker would get that information anyway, and we don't have time to waste. Okay, so we'll do a white box pen test there. Um, then we go into the deployment phase, we put security alerting in place via Slack, via Jira, PageDuty, whatever tools the team are using, make sure you get them to the engineers. We build out incident response process, which I'm gonna cover in the next module, and then we'll create run books, which are dedicated scenarios that could happen from the threat modeling. That is our secure software development lifecycle when building a new product. Now, we automate this as much as we can once the product's built, we try and integrate these things or we might do some things on an annual basis, for example. That's the secure software development lifecycle. Use this, create your own version of this or follow this one when you go into companies.